Hi, I'm Paul from Unleash Motorhome Hire and I'll be your host for your upcoming trip. We want your stay to be as comfortable as possible so we've created this handover video to show you all the systems of the vehicle so on the day of collection you'll already be familiar with everything. We'll still be here to do a handover in person just to make sure that you're comfortable with everything before you drive off. Before we get started you'll notice around the motorhome these handy QR codes. If you've forgotten how to do anything or just need a little help then scan these with the camera on your phone and it will take you directly to this section of the video. All of our videos are available on our YouTube channel just search Unleashed Motorhome Hire to view all of our videos. So let's begin. You'll only have two keys for the van. An ignition key and a smaller habitation key. The locks on the van operate from the smaller key. All the locker doors on the van operate the same. Insert your key, turn it to unlock and the handle will pop out. Twist the handle to unlatch it and then open the door. When you're finished in the locker, twist the handle to latch it back in place, then lock it again before pushing the handle in. You'll hear it click back into place and just so you're aware, these locks can sometimes be a little bit awkward. The fuel fills just behind the passenger door on all our vehicles. If you're in a Fiat van, you'll need the ignition key to unlock the cap. With the Fords, there is no cap and the nozzle insert straight in. All of the vehicles we run have the new Euro 6 engines, which means they take ad blue as well. We top this up regularly but should the warning light come on on the dash, you'll need to put some in. When the warning light comes on, it generally gives you about 750 miles notice, so there's no need to stop straight away, but the next time you fuel up, just put 5 litres in, and this should be sufficient for around 750 to 1,000 miles of driving. AdBlue is readily available from any petrol station and most supermarkets. Inside the gas locker you'll find your gas cylinder, electric hookup cable and fresh water hose. We provide refillable gas systems in all our vans which will be supplied full or nearly full. The gas should always be switched off whilst driving. To turn it off locate the brass knob on the top of the cylinder and turn it clockwise for off. When you park up switch it back on again and remember even if you're just parking up for the day somewhere you'll need to switch it back on so the fridge will have something to run off. There's also a level indicator. These aren't 100% accurate, they tend to show full until the cylinder is around 60% used and then will drop down relatively quickly. If you need to fill the gas when you're away, then we tend to use the Autogas website. This contains up-to-date information and map searches for your closest LPG station. We've created a separate video showing you how to fill the gas which you can access by scanning the QR code on the gas locker door. In the rear of the van, you'll find a broom, your outdoor table, chairs, and a pair of leveling ramps. The leveling ramps are there for parking the motorhome on when your pitch isn't quite level. You can drive or reverse onto these, use under the front, side or rear, just to get your van sitting nice and level. Also, if you have a model with a drop-down bed, you'll find your ladders in the back here. To use the bike rack, simply drop the tray down. On the base you have straps to secure the wheels of the bike to. These are adjustable to suit the width of the wheels. On the top we have adjustable arms. Secure these to the crossbar of the bike. And remember, there's a 60kg weight limit on all of the bike racks on our motorhomes. To connect the motorhome up to mains electric, first wind the cable off the reel. It's important to do this as left coiled up it will generate heat and in extreme circumstances these reels have been known to catch fire. Secondly, connect the van end by pulling back the lid and inserting into the socket. Finally, connect the trailing lead to the power source on the site. To disconnect, follow the procedure in reverse. When removing the lead from the van, 
you'll need to press down this little lever in order to release the plug. Your fresh water hose is located in your gas locker. All our vans come with 5 meters of hose with hose lock adapters and tap connectors. Some pitches will have their own water supply but for the most part you'll need to take your van to the motorhome service point where you'll be able to fill your fresh water and empty your waste. When filling the van you can either just fill it until it overflows or use the refill function on the main control panel which will tell you when the tank is full. All the water from the sink and shower goes into a holding tank underneath the vehicle. There's a waste release handle which when pulled will simply drop the water out of the bottom of the van. On the sites they will usually have a drive over grid or eco drain where you can let this water go. Just position the van over the grid, pull the handle and wait until it's empty. Once the water stops flowing just push the handle back in which will seal the cassette back up. To empty the toilet, unlock and open the locker door. Lift the blue lever at the bottom and slide the cassette out. If the cassette won't come out, this is because the grey lever on the toilet itself isn't shut properly. With the cassette out, you have a carry handle and wheels. Take this over to the LSAM point on the site. Unscrew the lid and make sure you put this where it can't fall into the pit. Holding the cassette with both hands, pour the waste out. Once pouring, press your finger on the blue button. This allows some air into the cassette and then the contents will come out smoothly rather than glugging. Adjacent to the LSAM point will be a fresh water hose. Rinse the cassette and empty again. You may have to do this a couple of times to get everything out of the bottom. Once the water is running clear, you know everything is out. Just remember when using the toilet, what goes in must come out. So this is the main control panel for all your electrical systems in the vehicle. Whenever you want any power on in the back of the van, we just press this button here. You'll get the orange light on here just to tell you that the panel's switched on. I'll just go around all these buttons in order just so you know what everything does. You won't need them all, but I'll show you everything anyway. So these two here are for your battery levels. You've got your engine battery and your leisure battery. If I press the button once, it shows me the battery voltage. Press it again, it shows me the percentage. Same with the leisure battery. Press it once for voltage and again for percentage. The reason why we're not getting the percentage on here is I'm currently plugged into hookup. We can see this little orange symbol that looks like a cable here. That's just showing me the van's plugged in. Now when I check the battery level for the leisure battery, we get this symbol here which tells me that the leisure battery is charging. So in the top right we've got our water levels. If I just press this we get the blue symbol showing at the bottom. That's our fresh water. As you can see the van's empty at the moment. If I press it again the symbol turns red and this is for our waste water. So that's the water that comes from the sink and the shower. It only shows in third increments, so it will show 0, 33, 66 or 100. Now when the van gets nearly empty, it's going to start beeping and flashing at us with this blue symbol to tell us that we need to fill up with water. Equally as much, if there's too much waste water in the van, it'll start beeping and flashing with the red symbol. Now roughly speaking, the waste and fresh water tanks are the same size, so once you've run a full tank of fresh water through it, you need to think about emptying your waste. In the top left is our water pump. Whenever you want to use any water, whether it be the sink, shower or toilet, you need to have the pump switched on. It's good practice just to keep the pump switched off when you're not using it. There's two reasons for that. Number one, if you were to run out of water, the pump would just overrun until it burns itself out. Secondly, every now and then when the pump's switched on, you will hear it prime itself. If you leave that switched on overnight, it's going to prime itself at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. So whenever you're not using it, just pop that back off there. Below that is our outside light. That's simply just on and off with that switch there. 
next down is our interior lighting. So if I just press that, all the lights in the van will come on. There are individual switches all the way around the vehicle and we'll show you those at handover. Just worth noting as well that the television is on the same circuit as the lighting. So if you do want to watch the TV, you just need to have the lighting switched on. Finally, at the bottom, this just tells us the inside cab temperature. It's not linked to the central heating in any way. It's just for information only. The easiest thing to do when you leave the vehicle is just hit the master power button and that'll switch everything off. It doesn't affect the function of the fridge or the central heating so you can keep those running without the power beam on in the back of the van. Your heating and hot water is controlled from this panel here. Whenever you want to do anything, just press the button in the centre. Across the top here, we've got heating, hot water, energy selection and fan speed. To go into one of the options, we just turn the dial until it's flashing. So to adjust the heating, we're flashing on heating, click on the centre button. Turn the dial to the temperature you want the van at and click again. When we go back to the main screen, we can now see that we've got the heating running. As soon as the boiler starts to operate, that will start flashing to show that the heating's working. To turn the heating off again, do the exact opposite. Click into the menu, it's flashing on heating, click again and turn the dial all the way back to the left till it says off. Click the button and the heating's now off. To use the hot water, click into the main menu, go one click to the right so we're flashing on water and then click in again. So we've got three options here. We've got Eco, which heats the water to 40 degrees. We've got Hot, which heats it to 65. And then we've got a boost function, which overrides everything and heats the water up as quickly as possible. For the most part, you're just gonna use the Hot. So if we click on that, when we go back to the main screen now, we can see we've got the water on and it's set on Hot. An easy way to tell whether you've got a tank of hot water or not is whether this is flashing. Once the boiler's kicked in, this will start flashing to show that the hot water's heating. Once you've got a full tank of hot water, this will go solid. To turn it off, follow the procedure in reverse, go into the menu, into your water settings, turn the dial back to the left and click on it again. Now with this boiler, we can choose to run it off gas or electric or a combination of both. If you're on site and plugged into mains, then we suggest you use it off electric to save your gas. If you're not on site or you are on site, but you don't have a hookup, then just run it off the gas. So to change the energy selection, click into the menu and we're going to go two clicks to the right to come over to this symbol here. Click into it and we can see at the moment it's set to gas and at the top we've got the gas bottle symbol. So we can either run this on a mix of gas or electric or a partial or full electric. There's only two settings that you're really going to use and that'll be either full gas or full electric. When we're set on electric, you can see at the top, the symbol changes from a gas bottle symbol to the electrical flashes. If we click into that, when we turn something on now, and come back to the main screen, we can see we've got the water on, but the symbol at the top, rather than being the gas bottle, is now the electrical flashes. When you've got the heating switched on, you have a choice of fan speeds. So if we go into the menu, come all the way over to the right to the fan symbol, click into it, and we've either got eco or high. Eco's fine for day-to-day -day use. It will heat the van through, but if you do need a quick uh, boost, then you can turn the fan on to high. 
I wouldn't recommend having the fan on high overnight if you're leaving the heating switched on because it is quite noisy. On Eco, you can barely hear it at all. To use the fridge, simply press and hold the power button for a couple of seconds and it will turn itself on. Just make sure the A symbol is showing. This means that the fridge is set to automatic and it will cycle between gas, electric hookup and engine. To adjust the settings or temperature, press and hold the square. Firstly it will flash on the energy settings which we don't want to change. So if you press the square again, it will then go over to the temperature settings. We can adjust up and down using the arrow keys. Usually three bars is fine, four if it's quite hot, five is great for initial cooling but will start to freeze everything in the fridge after 24 hours or so. It's normal for the display on the fridge to go blank and you'll just have this little blue LED to show that the fridge is working fine. If it develops a fault, the LED will turn red and the display will start flashing. Simply press and hold the power button to turn it off and then turn it back on again. It will find itself a new energy source and go again. Just remember that at the top of the fridge is the element. Items placed close to this can soft freeze. So if you have any fruit or veg, place this lower down the fridge to avoid spoiling it. To use the toilet, lift the lid and slide the grey lever over, which will open up the flap in the bottom. Do your business, then the flush is located on the panel behind. Remember you'll need to have the water pump switched on in order to flush. Once finished, slide the lever back over to seal the cassette back up. The first time you use the toilet, you'll need to put chemicals in. We use the Aquachem green sachets. These are a lot more environmentally and septic tank friendly. Also, some sites won't accept the blue chemicals anymore. Simply take one out of the container and drop it into the toilet. Flush a little water down so it's got something to dissolve into and then it's ready to use. You don't need to put chemicals in every time you use the toilet, just whenever you refresh the toilet cassette. There'll be enough toilet chemicals in the van for you to refresh it every day if you want to. Even with just light usage, we'd recommend changing it every other day, especially in the summer months where it's hot. There is an indicator on the back of the toilet to tell you how full it is, but without being too blunt, when you open the flap, you can see exactly how full it is. One word of warning, if your cassette is full and you're driving on winding, hilly roads, you risk spillage into the locker itself, and this really isn't a pleasant job to clean up, so best to empty before you travel. To use the shower, if you have a model with a wooden tray over, firstly remove the tray and put to one side. Release the poppers to allow the screen to be folded round. When starting the shower, always have the lever in the six o'clock position. The water in the boiler can get incredibly hot. Six o'clock is not too hot or cold. If you have the combination tap head shower, then blend the water first to the desired temperature. Press the button on the top to switch to the shower flow. But that the boiler only holds 10 liters of hot water. This equates to roughly five minutes of shower runtime depending on temperature. It will take around 20 to 30 minutes for the boiler to reheat another tank. If your van isn't level, you may find that the shower can drain quite slowly. The hob in the kitchen is all electric ignition. Simply turn the dial, press and hold for a few seconds and then release. With the oven and grill, Turn the dial to the right, the flame symbol for the grill. Again, press and hold the dial and then press the ignition button. You'll hear it ignite, keep the dial pressed for a few seconds and then this will stay alight. For the oven, turn it the opposite direction and do exactly the same. The cupboards above and below will contain all of your kitchen equipment. This includes cutlery, crockery, glassware, chopping boards, two pans and a frying pan, tin and bottle openers, a knife set and cooking utensils. 
There's a gas kettle for when you're not on hookup, an electric kettle, Tassimo coffee machine and toaster for when you are. We even include tea, coffee, salt, pepper and sugar to get you going. Cleaning products include fairy liquid, hand wash, anti-back spray and wipes. We also include a sponge scourer, microfiber cloth, tea towel and kitchen roll. To open the windows, press the button on the catch and turn. Some of the windows have adjusters on the struts to keep them open. Simply twist clockwise to keep open and then anti-clockwise to release them. We have two types of window blinds in the vans. Our Zafiros have the blackout blind at the front and the fly screen at the rear. To operate, just pull the blind and gently push in towards the van and these will hook into place. To release, pull down and away and the same with the fly screens. With our other models, the blackout blind comes from the bottom and the fly screen from the top. Just squeeze the catch to release and pull all the way up and then this will latch into place. To release, squeeze the catch and pull down. You'll find that the fly screen will come down with it, so pinch the catch on this to release. These blinds are not soft close, so guide them back up rather than letting them go. To operate the roof light, press the button and pull the handle back. Draw it all the way back to fully open, or you have a couple of half settings as well. Please remember to make sure that all windows and roof lights are closed prior to travelling. All of our vans contain smart TVs. Whenever you change regions in the van, you'll need to retune it. Rather than going through this now, you'll find a quick start guide inside your motorhome explaining how to do this. You're also able to tether the TV to your phone or mobile internet in order to watch Catch Up, Amazon or Netflix. Again, instructions on how to do this are contained within the van. In every van, you'll find a full array of safety and emergency equipment. We have smoke and carbon monoxide detectors, and in your floor box, you'll find a fire extinguisher, fire blanket, warning triangle, high vis vests, bulbs, and first aid kits. We usually keep our brush and dust pans in here too. In the glove box, you'll find an accident report sheet. If you are unfortunate enough to have an accident, our insurance requires that this form be completed. On the back of the form, you'll find an emergency assistance number in case you have any mechanical issues with the motorhome. Please inform us of any damages, no matter how small, as soon as you possibly can. This gives us the opportunity to make provisions for when you return the vehicle. With any mechanical issues, again, please contact us. We have access to the vehicle's onboard diagnostics, so may be able to see what's going on. We should also be able to guide in any assistance using the tracking data to establish a precise location for you. Finally, under the sun visor, you'll find a card with your vehicle's height, length and width. And under the passenger side, some pre-driving checks. Things just to watch out for and check before setting off. We often get asked for any driving tips or things to be careful of whilst driving the motorhomes. The first thing to say is they're actually quite easy to drive. The vision from the top and blind spot mirrors is great and you have the two cameras at the back of the van which you can use for both reversing and as a rear view mirror if you want to whilst driving. As you're sat in quite an elevated position, this also helps with your vision. Most of the damage we get to the vehicles is to the rear end. As you can see, there's quite a large overhang behind the back wheels. When you turn, you're going to get a bit of reverse swing from the back end of the van. Now if you're in a tight spot, for example you're in a car park or you've pulled into the side of the road to let somebody past, remember to pull off and turn gradually, keeping your eye on the mirror so as not to catch the back end of the van. Motorhomes are also quite tall, so please be careful of low branches when you're driving on smaller roads. Finally, you weigh three and a half tonnes. Don't get tempted to drive onto the beach or any soft ground that you don't know is suitable. As idyllic and as tempting as these spots look, 
you don't want to get stuck. Just because there's cars on there, it doesn't mean it's suitable for a motorhome. When returning the vehicle, we ask that the van is refuelled, the toilet cassette and locker is empty and cleaned, and that the grey water is emptied. We don't have facilities on our yard to empty these, so these will need to be done prior to leaving your final campsite. Unless otherwise indicated on your contract, your return time is 11am. We hope that your collection was punctual and we ask for this to be reciprocated on your return. This implies that the vehicle is on the yard, emptied and ready to inspect by this time. Please allow yourself plenty of time, especially if you're travelling at peak times and if you know you're going to be late, then please advise us as soon as you can. We will have staff on site waiting to clean and turn around the vehicles as soon as they arrive, so this gives us the opportunity to inform them too. We fully expect to clean the vehicles inside and out, but if you can make sure that all your rubbish is removed, kitchen equipment tidy and clean, and have a quick sweep through to remove the worst, this is very much appreciated as it helps us to turn around the vans quickly and efficiently for our next customers to enjoy their holiday. When you do arrive to collect your vehicle, please remember we need to see a photo ID. This applies to anyone who is driving the van. We'll also need to take the pre-authorisation for your damage deposit and finally we'll do a full tour of the van and note down any damages on a report sheet which we'll both then sign along with your contracts before getting you on your way. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.